Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? How are you doing? Well. You're doing fine? I'm fine. I hope that you have had a very, very good weekend and that you have enjoyed. I checked on the platform and I realized that most of you have finished with a very, very satisfactory result. So congratulations for that. And for the ones who are pending, remember that this is the last week, right? So we're going to finish our module this week. So it is important that you have uh, completed all the exercises and, uh, um, and the exam as well, because this is the last week, remember that. Uh, so we're going to start the class from where we stopped yeah, the last Friday. So I'm gonna share my screen. Hmm. Okay, uh, this is what we had the last uh, Thursday that we had our last class. We stopped in this exercise. I don't know if you guys did something or started this exercise already. If you don't, just like make a quick recap of this. We were saying that uh, we're gonna use some and any in questions, right? And there is no, um, no change in meaning. But if the sentence is negative, we are going to use any. And if the statement is affirmative, we are going to use some. So let us go ahead and try to complete this exercise um, by giving our answers or our guesses based on what we have studied. So uh, the first one, it's, I don't need any money because I'm going to bring my lunch to school today. All right, so number two, as I read here, he doesn't have, and as it is negative, what is going to be the answer here? He doesn't have any, any. correct. He doesn't have any pants, but I have some, some, some pants, pants. Some pants. Uh -huh, but I have some pants. Uh, okay, so let us move on and continue with the number three, Edwin. Our teacher didn't give us any homework yesterday. Perfect, thank you so much, Edwin. Select someone else to continue with number four, please. Uh, Herbert. Okay, Herbert, help us with number four, please. Number four. I am, I am, I am curious. Do we have any time to break enough? Excellent, Herbert. Well done, Herbert. Congratulations. Herbert, select someone to continue with number five, please. Well, I Jorge will do. Alexis. Yes, Herbert. Jorge Alexis. Okay, Jorge Alexis. Number 
Number five. Please. Do they have some library card? No, they don't have any. Okay, excellent job. Thank you so much, Jorge. Select someone for number six, please. My Ricardo. Thank you, Ricardo. Okay. Help us. Uh, Paul wants to buy some new shoes. Okay, excellent. Select someone for number seven, Ricardo. Um, let me see. Uh, Anna? Anna Guerra? Okay. Number seven is? Number yes. seven. Yes, number Excuse seven. Excuse me. Excuse me, I need some information about, about the flight to Boston. Very good, excellent job, Anna. Select someone for number eight, please. Fatima. All right. I don't have any paper, but Mary has some. Excellent job. Select someone for number nine, please, Fatima. Fatima, can you help us selecting someone to continue? Uh, la compañera Dora. Okay, thank you, Dora. Uh, Mr. Smith has any question that he wants to ask you. Mm, can you repeat, please, Dora? Mr. Smith has any question that he wants to ask you. Uh, uh, why is, uh, any? Oh, sorry, uh, some. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Dora. It is some. Uh, because it is an affirmative um, sentence. Select someone to continue, please. Okay. Um, Herbert? Herbert Douglas. Uh, Herbert, I think Herbert already participated, but you can uh, select someone else. Hector? Um, the number 10. Please. Uh, they have some apples, but they don't have any bananas. Excellent, Hector. Help us select someone for number 11. Uh, let me see. Uh, Hilda Milagro. Okay. I'm sorry, but we don't have any more tickets. Excellent, Hilda. Thank you so much. Help us. Select someone for number 12. Diana Lisbeth. No. Diana. Diana Lisbeth. And I don't know if it's. Um, Diana Lisbeth, I think that. She is there, but I'm not really sure. Can you help us, Diana Guadalupe, please? Sí, please. Aquí estoy. Es que se... Ando bien, amiga.
I think that she's having troubles with the audio or maybe with the internet. Hello? Okay, this one is Thomas read some interesting books last month. Uh, number 13, Ingrid Xiomara. Okay, miss. It's about some meal and some sugar at the supermarket. Excellent. Thank you so much. That's the answer. Uh, Juan Carlos, can you continue with number 14? Uh, 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 do you have any coins for the board? No, I don't have any. Excellent. And finally, number 15, Eneida. Um, I need some help with my homework. Excellent. So here you can uh, confirm your answers. All of them were correct. So you did a very, very nice job with this. Uh, so we're going to move on uh, for the next topic. It's the four dead six. What do you have for breakfast? And the conversation fish for breakfast. But before we move to that part, I'm going to check attendance. So please uh, turn on your cameras and say present when you hear your name. Uh, I was checking the platform. I was checking your grades and uh, I saw that most of you have finished, which is excellent. But for the ones who hasn't finished, please remember that this is the last week. So you need to have the platform completed. It meaning, meaning all the exercise and the final exam as well. Don't wait until the last minute to do it. And the rest of you guys, what's going on with your cameras? Uh, I see some people is still uh, with the cameras off. So remember that um, our classes are being audited by Insapor, and especially the, the moment that I check attendance because they want to make sure that the ones that are here in class are the ones that are signed for the course. Okay, so, uh, what is the document? Mm. It's loading, give me a couple of minutes. All right. Mm. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Anna, Anna Bernarda. Present teacher. Okay, Andrea Alessandra. Present miss. Thank you. Angie Elizabeth. Angie Elizabeth, seems like no here. Uh, Carlos Rafael Molina, I guess never been here. Um, right, let's continue. Cesar Azael. Cesar Azael is not here. Daniel Edgardo. Present teacher, present, present. Thank you. Eh, Delmi Roxana. Present teacher. Okay, thank you. Diana Guadalupe. Present teacher. Thank you. Diana Lisbeth. Present teacher. Dora Mary. Present teacher. Okay, Edwin. Present teacher. Thank you. Eneida Patricia. Present teacher. Thank you. Erika Eloisa. Uh, 
Erika. No, dear. Eugenia Asuncion. Present, Miss. Thank you. Fatima Carolina. Present. Thanks. A lot. Uh, Glenda Annette. Present, teacher. Thank you. Glenda Beatriz. Mm. Harold Eduardo. Present, teacher. Thank you. Hector Jose. Present. Present, teacher. Okay, thank you. Herbert Douglas. Present, teacher. Thank you. Hilda Milagro. Present, teacher. Thank you. Um, Ingrid Xiomara. Present, miss. Thanks. Uh, Jaime Antonio. It's weird that he's not here. Jesus Antonio. Present, teacher. Thank you. Um, Jocelyn Graciela. Jorge Alexis. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Carlos Menendez. Present teacher. I thank you. Catherine Abigail. Ricardo Josué. Present teacher. Thank you. And Rodolfo Lopez. Rodolfo Lopez. Oh, seems like not here. Okay, so let's move on. I was saying. Okay, this is the video and the conversation that we're gonna practice. So let us watch the video and then we're going to practice pronunciation. Let's look at it. Right. Hi everyone. In this class, you'll learn about common breakfast foods in different countries. Additionally, you'll practice a conversation which illustrates some cultural differences in food. Let's get started by learning what people in the US, Japan, and Mexico eat for breakfast. What do you have for breakfast? The US. Eggs. Bacon. Toast with butter. Orange juice. Coffee. Jam. Jelly. Japan. Fish. Rice. Soup. Pickles. Green tea. Mexico. Eggs. Beans. Tortillas. Fresh fruit. Sweet bread. Coffee with milk. So what do you have for breakfast? Next, what I would like for you to do is to listen to a conversation which illustrates this topic. Let's listen and practice. Fish for breakfast? Let's have breakfast together on Sunday. Okay, come to my house. My family always has a Japanese style breakfast on Sundays. Really? What do you have? We usually have fish, rice, and soup. Fish for breakfast? That's interesting. Sometimes we have a salad, too, and we always have green tea. Well, I never eat fish for breakfast, but I like to try new things. Now it's your turn to practice this conversation along with the vocabulary. You may watch this video as many times as necessary. I will also like for you to answer the following question in our discussion forums. What do you have for breakfast? Mm. 
Okay, uh, that was the video. Do you have any question regarding to what you already seen? No questions? No questions. No questions. No, no question. Okay, so what about you? What do you usually have for breakfast, Eugenia? Um, my case, uh, scrambled eggs, uh, fried beans, uh, fried plantains, and a cup of coffee. Excellent. Eugenia, can you ask the question to another classmate? Okay. Uh, Juan Carlos, what do you have for breakfast? Uh, I break fast eggs with beans and coffee and tortilla. Okay, Juan Carlos, ask the same question to another classmate, please. Herbert Lula. My breakfast usually eat beans, grilled, cheese, eggs, and coffee. Excellent, Herbert. Um, ask the, the same question to another classmate. Diana Guadalupe Triguero. Now ask the question. What do you breakfast? What do you I, have for breakfast, Diana? I always have breakfast, eggs, beans, uh, bread, cheese, and oranges. Okay, perfect, Diana. Ask another classmate, please. Mm, Harold. Um, what do you have from breakfast? I breakfast uh, uh, pizza. <laughs> pizza for breakfast. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's interesting. Okay, so we're going to practice. Um, a couple of things about pronunciation, stress. As you can see, um, the most important words in a sentence are stress. Do you remember what stress means? Um. Okay, what do we refer to when we talk about stress in a sentence or in a word? What do you remember about stress? What is that? Don't you remember what is stress? No? Es la fuerza de voz o donde la, la uh, suena un poquito más eh, como con énfasis. So we're going to listen here and practice the stress words. Remember that the stress words in the sentences are the ones that have the purple dot here. Page 60, exercise four, pronunciation. Sentence stress. Part A, listen and practice. Notice the stressed words. Do we need any eggs? Yes. We need some eggs. Do we need any lettuce? No, we don't need any lettuce. Okay, so as you see, the most important word in a sentence are stressed. And this is what it normally happens. So you don't have to feel worried about listening because uh, the, most, uh, the most important words are the ones that can give you a clue of what it, the people talking about. So let us repeat. Do we, do we need any eggs? Do, do we need eggs? Uh, yes, we need some eggs. 
Yes, yes. yes. We, we need, need some eggs. Egg. Do we need any lettuce? Do, Do we, we need, need any, lettuce? any lettuce? No, we don't need any lettuce. No, no. no. We don't need, we don't need any lettuce. lettuce. Okay, right, that's perfect. And after that, you had a conversation. Let's listen to the conversation again, and then we're going to practice in groups. Page 61, exercise six, conversation. Fish for breakfast? Okay, so that's the conversation. Remember the topic, fish for breakfast? That's kind of weird. So we're going to listen the conversation and I'm going to pause so that you can repeat after you hear. Listen and practice. Okay. Let's have breakfast together on Sunday. Let's have breakfast Let's together, have on have breakfast together, together on Sunday. Okay, come to my house. My family always has a Japanese style breakfast on Sundays. Okay, come, okay. 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 come to my house. Oh, my family 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 always has a Japanese style breakfast on Sunday. Really? What do you have? Really? Really? What do you have? What do you have? We usually have fish, rice, and soup. We usually have fish, rice, and soup. Fish for breakfast? That's interesting. Fish for breakfast? Sometimes we have a salad too. And we always have green tea. Sometimes, Sometimes we have a tattoo. And we always have green tea. green tea. Well, I never eat fish for breakfast, but I like to try new things. Yes, well, I never, eat, never eat breakfast for breakfast, but I like to try new things. All right, do you have any question regarding to a uh, new word, new vocabulary or pronunciation? Después de Japanese, ¿cómo se pronuncia la siguiente palabra? Después de Japanese. Japanese style. Style. Uh, style. Any other question? No more questions? Okay, so. Yes? ¿Cómo se pronuncia exactamente el that's interesting? Interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. Interesting. Yes, okay. so that's it. Yes. That's interesting. Interesting. That's interesting. Excellent. That's interesting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other question before I set up the rooms? Okay. I'm going to set up the breakout rooms so you can practice the conversation with your classmates. Remember to click join or unirse so you can get in groups and practice pronunciation.
I think that everybody's back again. So we will continue with the next part. So we're going to watch the video about the frequency adverbs. And then we are going to ask, study a little bit more on them. Okay, um, next, adverse of frequency. This is our today's main topic. God. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's watch it. Just like we've learned in this class by putting the when talking about through. Let's get started by analyzing the examples on the chart. Adverbs of frequency. I always eat breakfast. I usually eat breakfast. I often eat breakfast. I sometimes eat breakfast. I hardly ever eat breakfast. I never eat breakfast. Sometimes I eat breakfast. Do you ever have fish for breakfast? Yes, I always do. Sometimes I do. No, I never do. Always. Usually. Often. Sometimes. Hardly ever. Never. Let me start by explaining what adverbs of frequency are and how we can categorize them. Adverbs of frequency are words that come before the verbs, and they express frequency. For example, if you would like to express that you take a shower every day, 100% of the time, that will be always. You can use adverbs of frequency for that. For example, always take a shower. This means I take a shower 100% of the time. If you would like to express that you never smoke cigarettes, uh, this means 0% of the time. You can use adverbs of frequency for that. For example, I never smoke cigarettes. This means 0% of the time. The easiest way to categorize adverbs of frequency is by giving each a percentage number. So let's do just that. Always equals 100%. Usually equals 80%. Often equals 70% sometimes equals 50%, hardly ever equals 25%, never equals 0%. Next, I would like to explain how to use them and in which order to use them. Typically, we will use adverbs of frequency after the pronoun or subject. We can follow this formula. Subject plus adverb of frequency plus the verb plus some kind of complement. Let's analyze a couple of examples. I always eat breakfast. The subject is I. The adverb of frequency is always. The verb is eat. And the complement is breakfast. I sometimes eat breakfast. The subject is I. The adverb of frequency is sometimes. The verb is eat. And the complement is breakfast. I would like to show an exception to this rule. If you notice the example, sometimes I eat breakfast. 
with the adverb of frequency sometimes. You may put that at the beginning, just like you see on the example. Sometimes I eat breakfast. You may also say, I sometimes eat breakfast. Just like we've learned in this class by putting the adverb of frequency after the subject. And finally, you may say the following. I eat breakfast sometimes. You can put the adverb of frequency at the end of your sentence. The last point that I would like to touch in this class is how to form questions and answers about frequency. Let's start by understanding how to form questions. You may follow this formula, auxiliary do or does, plus the subject, plus ever, plus the verb, plus some kind of complement. Let's take a look at the example question now. Do you ever have fish for breakfast? The uh, auxiliary verb is do. After that, we have the subject you. Then we will add ever. Next, we will add the, a verb have. And finally, we need to add a complement fish for breakfast. And we can answer this type of question in different ways. For example, yes, I always do sometimes I do no I never do now is your time to practice by giving lots of examples of your own I would like for you to think about food particularly the type of food you eat for breakfast lunch and dinner and express how often you eat this type of food. For example, I always drink coffee for breakfast. I, I never drink coffee for dinner. I hardly ever eat fish for lunch. I never eat fish for breakfast. After you finish this activity, please share your work in our discussion forums. Like this. Okay, so do you have any question regarding to the video on how to use the frequency adverbs? I have a question. Yes, I will. Well, acerca de la palabra eh, often, eh, bueno, a mí me había eh, enseñado often, pero aquí escuché que él eh, decía often. ¿Cuál, ¿Cuál es lo correcto? Both are correct. Remember that. Um, Hay diferentes acentos, pero los que son como los uh, oficiales, digamos, los nativos son el acento americano y el acento británico. El americano es el que es, pretendemos eh, nosotros aprender. Eh, si es americano, sería often, often, como con F, often, así, often. Y británico, eh, ellos son más marcados, ellos dicen often. Often. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. uh, a mí me gusta más el británico. Es como que fuera ruso, pero bueno. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, todos are correct. Es más fácil de entender. Es más es fácil. Más de fácil. Entender. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Como marcan cada palabra. Sí, mm -hmm. es realmente fácil. Eso. Pero como les digo, no tengan miedo con los acentos y con los listening, porque realmente, pues, siempre hay maneras. Siempre hay maneras de, de hacer que la gente repita al ritmo que uno quiere. <laughs> so don't worry. 
But yes, uh, any other question? ¿Hay alguna otra pregunta? Eh, yo sí tengo una pregunta. ¿Cómo traduciríamos el de la, para hacer la pregunta de, de qué tan seguido tenemos algo, verdad? Eh, do you ever, ¿cómo se estaría traduciendo eso? Um, como, acuérdense que hay cosas que no tienen una traducción exacta del inglés al español y hay otras que si las Um, si las traducimos suenan ya raras o pierden el sentido entonces yo lo interpreto verdad como un alguna vez do you ever uh, alguna vez o por ejemplo si le pregunto do you ever uh, go to the movies alguna vez vas al cine do you ever o sería como alguna vez ahora uh, y ahí me pueden contestar y yes I sometimes go to the movies or I rarely go to the movies etcétera pero si yo quiero saber con qué frecuencia entonces yo pregunto how often do you how often do you do this ajá okay. uh -huh. y ahí pues este es, es, es bien amplio en ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre ever y never? Ok, la diferencia entre ever y never es que el ever lo voy a utilizar en pregunta nada más. Ever solo lo uso en pregunta. Do you ever, para saber si alguna vez la persona hace eh, ciertas cosas, lo que yo sea que le voy a preguntar como eh, alguna vez... Eh, Toma sopa en el desayuno. Do you ever have soup for breakfast? Do you ever? So el ever lo vamos a usar en pregunta. Y el never. Eh, el never so es como decir nunca. El nunca sí lo podemos usar en pregunta también. Como pregúntale. Uh, do you never? Pero eso no es común. Usarlo en pregunta. Es más común ver el never. En oración, never significa nunca, algo que usted nunca hace. Cero por ciento. Eh, ¿Alguna otra pregunta con esto de los frequency adverbs? Diana preguntaba algo la vez pasada. No crean que se me olvida lo que me pregunta. <ríe> y ahora que estamos en el, en, el, en el topic, les explico. Ahí nos explicaban en el video que eh, los adverbios de frecuencia siguen una estructura en oración, ¿verdad? Primero, eh, ¿qué decía que va primero? El sujeto, luego el adverbio. El, 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 el adverbio. Uh -huh. sí. Y luego del adverbio luego, tiene que ir verbo, un verbo. Verbo. Complement. Y complement. Hay algunos que se salen de oh, esta regla, los podemos mover de otra manera y ese es el sometimes, es una excepción a esa regla. El sometimes lo puedo poner primero, antes del sujeto y lo puedo usar con la estructura que estábamos viendo. Eh, hay otros que son más específicos. Eh, estos que estamos viendo aquí son, decíamos, always. ¿Cuál es el otro? Usually. 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 ¿Otro? Usually. Often. Ajá, uh -huh. often. Sometimes. Sometimes. Ay, Dios. <laughs> Me sucede cuando pongo la pantalla en blanco esta. Often, sometimes. 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 Hardly ever. Hardly ever. Uh, Hardly ever. Hardly ever. Hardly ever. Y never. Never. And never. Ok, esto es como ustedes vieron en el video, es como para dar una idea en porcentaje, digámoslo así, de qué tan, tan, es como para dar una idea eh, de qué tan seguido uno hace las cosas, pero va como en porcentaje. 
¿verdad? Por ejemplo, always es como algo que sucede siempre, siempre, sin falta, todos los días, todas las veces, es 100% del tiempo, always. Usually viene siendo como que algo que puede dejar, o como un 80%, ajá, algo que no sucede siempre. El often, ¿qué venía haciendo? Creo. Digamos, estaba en un 70% de algo que 50%. hacemos uh -huh. 50, es 70 so, sometimes, es, sometimes uh -huh. vendría siendo como un 40% quizá 40, 40, 40 ajá, hardly ever tenía en el 50, el sometimes 25%, por, es decir normalmente no alguna vez así uh -huh. y el never no, no. Nunca, nunca, 0%, ¿verdad? Y decíamos, es como decir, um, I always, I always um, drink coffee. ¿Saben qué coffee? Me costó mucho aprender a escribirlo. I always drink coffee in the morning. I always drink coffee in the morning. Esto es algo que siempre, siempre, siempre sucede, ¿verdad? Pero el always es como dar una idea en porcentaje. Ahora hay unos que son más específicos. ¿Cuáles son? Every day. Ajá. Por ejemplo, pero esos normalmente van al final de la oración y son más específicos. I drink la podría ser la misma oración. I drink coffee every day. I drink coffee every day. Ok. So, ellos van al final, right? De la oración, si se fijan. Y son más específicos. Eh, hay otros que... Um, bueno, estos son every day. Puede ser también once. Si es una vez, decimos once. Si es dos veces, once. ¿cómo decimos? Twice. 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 Si es no, no. tres veces. Thrice. No. Thrice. No. 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 Good times. Uh, yes, clap for you. Le voy a dar un punto. Ahí está su punto. Ok, so de ahí para allá nos vamos con el three times, for example, right? Three times. Y de ahí vamos four times. Ya le vamos poniendo el times. Si es algo que solo sucede una vez, es once. Dos veces, twice. Y después ya de tres para allá le vamos agregando times, three times, four times, five times. Y luego le ponemos el, el complemento. Y esto es bien común, eh, como decir, I exercise. Quiero decir que yo me ejercito tres veces a la semana, lo cual es mentira, no hago ejercicio, no me gusta. Pero por darles un ejemplo, I exercise three times a week. Esto ya es bien puntual, bien específico. No estoy dando una idea en porcentaje, sino que estoy siendo bien específica con las veces que esto sucede. Y um, comúnmente van al final de la oración. Igual, ¿verdad? Cuando se va a tomar una pastilla, digamos, uh, también está el every. ¿Qué significa every? Cada. Uh, every Monday. Uh -huh. uh, ah, Ajá. también. Every es como decir cada. Right? Es cada. And that can be taken as an adverb frequency too. And, and that's it. Um, ¿Quedó claro esto con las frequency? Ahorita nos vamos a enfocar en esto, ¿verdad? En los que estaban en el content, pero para ampliar un poquito ya les expliqué ahí. Teacher, perdón, te dijo que era Hedro, Harley, Harley. Harley ever. Harley ever. 
Es como casi nunca. Casi nunca. Oh, hardly, ajá, hardly ever es como algo que casi nunca. Y el es, often es... Es algo que sucede como, como un, ¿qué? Con, con, seguido, seguido, pero digamos que es como una, la mitad del tiempo, como un 50% de las veces. Ok. Uh -huh. Pero el teacher sería no tan seguido o muy seguido. Uh, no tan seguido, pues decir not very often. También se, se es como not very often. Ajá, por ejemplo, después. Usual decir, usual sería usualmente. Oh. Usualmente, eso es algo que sucede como decir casi siempre. Uh, usually. Ok, y en always es siempre. Always es siempre, 100% del tiempo. Gracias. Ok, any other question? No more questions, so we can continue then. Okay, so um, making like a, a, an exercise on this, you have a couple of exercises in your material. I don't know if you have already completed them. Uh, let me share my screen again. No, this is a book. All right, here it is. Okay, so uh, you have uh, those exercises in your material about the uses of the frequency adverbs and the placement of them to be specific. Let's uh, put the adverbs in the correct places and then we practice it, right? And question is, what do you usually have for breakfast? Now we need to place often here in this sentence. What would you place often? <laughs> well, I, I often, I well, often I have coffee. Often. I often have coffee. Yes, exactly here. Well, I often, this put the I idea often. Now, continue in here. This is a question, and we have to use ever. Do you eat ever? Do you? Ever. Después del you tendría que ir el ever. Así es que ahí lo pueden ir marcando en su material. Uh, let's continue. Sometimes. I sometimes. I sometimes. Sometimes. Ajá. Aquí podemos decir no, I, I sometimes. I sometimes have um, breakfast at my desk. At my desk. Or I have breakfast at my desk sometimes. Oh, podemos sometimes ponerlo al principio. I sometimes I have breakfast on my desk. Now, usually in questions, ¿a dónde lo pondríamos? Do you usually eat breakfast or breakfast? For breakfast. Excellent. And the last one. No, uh, in the hurry. I hardly ever. I hardly ever. I hardly ever. I hardly ever. Ajá. No, I hardly ever have rice. Now, the next exercise, the letter C, uh, well, the letter B is to unscramble the sentences, is to put them in the correct order. Tenemos que poner esas palabras en el orden correcto para formar oraciones. Okay. I hardly ever eat a snack, eat eat a snack, snack at, at work. work. Very good, Hilda. I hardly ever eat snacks at work. What about number three? Sometimes I, sometimes I, eat, I eat, 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 eat for dinner. dinner. After for dinner. Escuché las dos opciones, which is really, really good. Um, sometimes I eat pasta for dinner or I sometimes eat pasta for dinner. Cualquiera de las dos. And finally, number four. Often I, I have, have dinner with my family. I often, often have, have dinner, with, dinner my with my family. I often have dinner with my family. Acuérdense que la única excepción aquí es con sometimes. Y aunque no lo mencionaba el material, también usually. Los dos pueden empezar una oración, sometimes y usually. 
those are the two exceptions that we have. So uh, we're gonna stop here. And uh, thank you for joining today's sections. Remember to complete, porque ya vi las notas, pero todavía hay un par por ahí que no han hecho nada de la sección 5 y tampoco el final exam. Acuérdense que esta semana terminamos, así de que por favor a completar eso. ¿Ok? So, Teacher, pasó asistencia. Yo no sé si había entrado cuando la pasó. Regáleme su nombre. Erika Eloisa González. Erika Eloisa. Bueno, yo la anoto. Ahorita voy a revisar allí. ¿Alguien más que quiera estar seguro? Jocelyn Beltrán. Jocelyn. Sí, Jocelyn no la vi. No estaba cuando pasé lista. Ok, ¿alguien más? Ok, me dijeron Jocelyn y... Erika Eloisa González. Erika Eloisa. Erika Eloisa, ahorita la pongo. Y Jocelyn. Gracias. Ok, gracias a ustedes. ¿Alguien más? Ya están, chicas. Ok, so see you tomorrow. Sleep well. See you. Okay. Take care. Okay, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night.